Hey Legal Eagles, it's true, a little while ago, this YouTube channel did in fact file suit against the White House, the CIA, the DOJ, the Department of State, and a whole bunch of other government agencies. On Twitter and YouTube, I asked for the questions that you had about this particular lawsuit, and you did not disappoint. I got over 2,000 questions about this ongoing suit. And since this is a great opportunity to take you guys along for the ride, I thought I would try and answer some of the most common questions that you had about this lawsuit. Now, I'll start off by answering one of the most common questions, which is why? And I think that the point of this lawsuit was misunderstood by a lot of people. The point of this lawsuit is governmental transparency, which I dare to say, I think most people should be in favor of more governmental transparency, especially into a part of government review that is not particularly well known and is famously opaque. And that is the pre-publication review process for people that have classified information and then want to write a book. And famously, this is something that governments don't want people to know very much about. And under the circumstances, it really looks like there were some political shenanigans that got in the way of John Bolton being able to publish one or more different manuscripts of his book for political reasons, not for national security reasons. And a suit like this only works when the government does something that it shouldn't, that it prevents a, a former government official from being able to disclose information that he or she should be able to disclose. If the government had upheld the uh, the standards of pre-publication review, the lawsuit wouldn't have anywhere to go because everything would have been properly classified. Given what we know, it seems that that is incredibly unlikely and that some things were prohibited from being disclosed that really shouldn't have been. And a lot of people also misunderstood what we are trying to accomplish here, which is that, remember, John Bolton submitted an original manuscript of his book to the government. Then they went through a whole process uh, saying what he could and could not publish, and then then they said he was okay to publish and then reneged on that uh, agreement when a political appointee came in after the career administrator said that the book was clear to go. So the, the point of the FOIA requests is uh, not seeking the book that has already been published, but going towards the original book that John Bol Bolton wanted to publish even before the initial pre-publication review. And on top of that, we're also looking for the communications amongst the government officials in terms of what considerations were they thinking about when they said John Bolton could and could not publish things. Is there correspondence with Michael Ellis, the political appointee, saying that John Bolton couldn't publish his book for political reasons. And then of course, there's the question of what standards, if any, did they use to decide whether John Bolton could publish the information in his book. So we're seeking a lot of different kinds of documents and not just the book that was published, but the original book that John Bolton wanted to publish and the correspondence about the pre-publication review process and what standards, if any, they were using. And even if the government didn't disclose anything other than explain who did the redactions of John Bolton's book, even that would be incredibly important information to get a glimpse into whether the redactions were uh, correct or not. And on top of that, when the US government responds to a FOIA request, they have to provide way more specificity than they do when they're conducting the pre-publication review process. In pre-pub review, they can basically say, remove this information and not really give you a, a reason why. When responding to FOIA, they have to tell us if they were removing information because it was classified or, or for some other reason. So even getting those responses would be a win because if they told John Bolton that they were removing things because it was classified and then tell us in their FOIA requests that the information wasn't classified, well, then we know that there were real shenanigans going on in the pre-publication review process in a way that absolutely should not happen. And this particular suit on behalf of Legal Eagle it's not entirely new. Uh, we're standing on the shoulders of some real giants in the world of FOIA and of governmental transparency. Organizations like Crew, Muckrock, Judicial Watch back in the day. All of these organizations are the real unsung heroes of FOIA and are really the ones that are working every day to disclose things that the US government doesn't want people to see. So we are following in the trail that they have already blazed and we're indebted to those kind of organizations that are working every day to uh, further governmental transparency. Now, this particular lawsuit is different for some reasons that we will talk about and uh, there's some interesting implications of it. But with that being said, let's dive into all of your particular questions about this lawsuit. 
Okay, so uh, one of the most popular questions I got is a variation of this question that was asked by uh, user Agma Schwa, who asks, uh, how much does it cost to sue something like the White House? Now, when you're talking about lawsuits, there are generally two big things that cost the most, and they're uh, divided into costs and fees. Costs are things like how much it costs to file the lawsuit, how much it costs to do the various transactional things, like have a court reporter. And then there are the, the much bigger things that are called fees. And that, that generally refers to how much it costs for your lawyer. Uh, and in the absence of a fee shifting statute, you gotta pay for your own uh, your own lawyer. In this particular case, it costs $400 to file a federal lawsuit. That's pretty standard. Um, then it'll cost probably a few thousand dollars in terms of uh, other filing fees uh, and things related to court reporters and uh, uh, stenographers for depositions if, if we get there, which for reasons we won't go into, we probably won't. So on the order, uh, in terms of the actual uh, raw fees, you're talking uh, several thousand dollars. Then when you're talking about attorneys, believe it or not, in Washington DC, probably an average cost of an attorney is $500 an hour. The really, really good uh, big firm attorneys, uh, you're probably talking about $1,000, $1,200 an hour. So for the kind of things that you're talking about in this litigation, it's gonna cost definitely a few hundred hours of attorney time. So you guys can do the math on that. So obviously the big X factor is how many hours of the attorney's time are you going to need to be able to propound something like this? And you know, on the very minimum, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars of attorney time, and it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars of attorney time if you're talking about taking this on appeal, which is particularly likely in a case like this. So yeah, uh, lawyers and lawsuits, very expensive. Uh, which takes us to the next question uh, by a user named Isparov Jr. Question, have any suits against the White House succeeded in the past? And if so, how frequently does this happen? Uh, so actually, uh, I, I can point you to one very recent example of, of pretty similar lawsuit that was very, very successful. And there is a journalist at BuzzFeed whose name is Jason Leopold, who has uh, done a lot of great stuff related to the Mueller report. And recently, uh, Mr. Leopold filed a FOIA request and then a, a FOIA lawsuit to enforce his FOIA requests to uh, try and get the unredacted Mueller report. And as a result, Lots of the portions of the original Mueller report were revealed and uh, further portions of the Mueller report were shown with more specificity as to why they were redacted and not revealed. So that is an example of a successful similar suit that as a result of uh, Jason Leopold and Buzzfeed, we now know a lot more about the original Mueller report. We don't know everything, but we do know that large portions were redacted when they probably shouldn't have been. He's gonna continue. We'll probably get even more portions of the Mueller report. And in in terms of successful and how often they're successful, well, it depends on, on what you mean. In terms of getting some of the previously redacted information and getting more specificity as to why other things were redacted in the first place, it happens pretty frequently. It's rare that you get all of the documents that you want, but in terms of holding the government's feet to the fire and getting more information, which is part of the reason for this particular suit. It happens with some regularity. Okay, uh, user JL Daydream asks, since you've sued the White House, are you actually allowed to comment on this as it's now an ongoing case? That is a very good question. As, a, as we've talked about a lot on this channel, it's a really, really bad idea for most people to go out and talk about ongoing litigation. That being said, uh, this video will be approved. So the odds of me saying something that are incredibly prejudicial to my case are probably pretty low, but this is an example of do as I say, not as I do. If you find yourself in litigation or a lawsuit or <laughs> in trouble with the government, best to let your lawyers handle everything. But also by the same token, don't take legal advice from a YouTube channel, hashtag not legal advice. All right, uh, user Tragic Solitude asks, how difficult is it to sue something as big as entire departments of the government? Well, it's not the easiest thing in the world. All right, so user Just a Poet asks, so is this the same as suing the United States government or is the White House in this context an entity of its own? That's a great question. Uh, we are suing several different agencies and entities within the government. Um, so when I say the White House, I'm actually referring to a, a couple of different departments. And primarily um, we are suing the uh, National Security Council, which John Bolton was uh, the, the head of, he was the National Security Advisor. That is one of the large portions 
We're also suing other agencies within the government that probably had access to John Bolton's book and might have participated in the pre-publication review process. And um, so that's why we're suing entities like the CIA and the Department of Justice and a whole bunch of other entities. So I refer to that generally as the White House, but we're actually suing a bunch of different entities all because they play different roles with respect to this, uh, this scenario. Okay, uh, next question is one Swedish fish. Oh, too bad you only have one Swedish fish. Swedish fish are great. Uh, how long do you think this whole ordeal will last? So this lawsuit is going to take several different forms and the over time, uh, different things will be adjudicated. And the first thing that we have to do is uh, make sure that Legal Eagle's FOIA requests, the original ones are entitled to what's called expedited review. Because for among other things, this information about John Bolton's book and the process that happened and the information that he was trying to divulge are really important. It was presumably part and parcel to the whole impeachment saga. And it could be very well relevant to the election in November. So um, the FOIA requests themselves need to be uh, adjudicated to be expedited so that they can be processed in a much quicker way. So in terms of getting a court to order that these requests are indeed related to a compelling interest and are entitled to expedited review, that could be on the order of a few months. And then we get into the substantive responses to the FOIA requests, which include more information about the pre-publication review, what happened in terms of the political concerns, and then of course uh, the responses uh, regarding uh, John Bolton's book in the first place. So that will probably take much longer. That you're probably looking to six months to a year. And there are some legal issues here that may require the Court of Appeals to weigh in here. So you're definitely looking at a multi-month, multi-year even uh, process with respect to all this stuff. So it's gonna be a long, long process. Okay, so that brings us to user Just Kaz, who asks, what would be the worst possible outcome that you'll face moving forward with this? Well, other than being suicided by the CIA, <laughs> There were so many comments that people were like, uh, oh man, it's gonna be terrible when Legal Eagle commits suicide by being shot twice in the back of the head. We've got some definitely uh, some gallows humor going on here, putting that aside. Really it's that this is just gonna take a really, really long time and that the information that we're able to get the government to, to disclose um, is minimal. We're gonna fight like hell to make sure that that doesn't happen. We have some legal issues with respect to the National Security Council. I think we'll be able to overcome those, but it's possible that a uh, court of appeals might disagree with us, but that's one of the reasons why there are other government entities here because uh, some of the concerns with respect to the NSC don't really apply to uh, the other governmental agencies here. And so we should be able to get some information eventually. It's just gonna take a really, really long time. And actually now is a great time to thank all of you out there. The, the outpouring of support uh, regarding my first videos when we, we broached the, the lawsuit was astonishing. And we're still getting the preliminary numbers in, but the outpouring of the donations to the nonprofit, uh, the national security counselors who are handling the nuts and bolts of this litigation was amazing. And I can't divulge all of the information, but I can say that because of your support, this will not be a, a one-off piece of litigation. We will uh, go forward in the future with other lawsuits related to governmental transparency. And I wanna make it clear, the donations that everyone made to the National Security Counselors uh, through Democracy Engine, none of that goes to me personally or to Legal Eagle, the company. That all goes to the nonprofit, the National Security Counselors who are uh, committed to governmental transparency. And this will not be a one-off collaboration. Uh, we are going to make sure that we do some other stuff in the future. So, you know, if you guys have any ideas about uh, other things that we can do in the name of governmental transparency, uh, you know, let us know because uh, we're going to be working together in the future. Okay, so a user whose uh, username is just a seemingly random series of letters asks, uh, what does the Central Intelligence Agency have to do with this? This sounds like more of an FBI matter. Well, that is a great question. Uh, with respect to John Bolton, remember he was the National Security Advisor, so he was privy to a lot of different 
information and worked with a lot of different governmental agencies. And the thing about the pre-publication review process is that when there is sensitive information or potentially classified information or potentially prohibited information, instead of having one agency do the review, you often give the source material to a bunch of different agencies that are responsible for that particular thing. When he submitted his book to the government, the National Security Council for pre-publication review, the NSC probably gave that book to other agencies so they can do their own review, including the CIA. So uh, that is one of the reasons why we have sued all of these different agencies is because they had access to the book, presumably, um, and uh, they are subject to FOIA, and we wanna know what concerns they had, what they told John Bolton to remove, and, and what they said he could not publish. So that's why in this particular case, the CIA and not the FBI is the particular agency to get FOIA'd in this particular case. Okay, uh, let's see, user Elizabeth Henning asks, this seems like the kind of lawsuit newspapers file when their FOIA requests are ignored or denied, and this is a matter of considerable national interest. Are any uh, press outlets joining you in the suit? So Elizabeth, you're absolutely right on. This is exactly that kind of suit. And there are other organizations that do this kind of thing all the time. Uh, in particular, one I'm particularly fond of is called Crew. Uh, it's the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. They do a great job of uh, really getting to the heart of important matters, FOIAing them, and being capable of taking those suits to court to be able to enforce their FOIA requests. So if you believe in the mission of governmental transparency and you believe in the mission of this particular lawsuit, I would highly recommend checking out Crew and Muckrock. Um, they do this kind of thing all the time. This lawsuit is different. Uh, I hinted at that uh, before because we're taking the, the NSC, the National Security Council, head on, which is something that a lot of these organizations um uh, aren't willing to do for, for various reasons. We think it this particular uh, incidence with John Bolton, especially given the impeachment saga and, and now John Bolton's book and potentially the, the election in November, incredibly important. And so we're, we're willing to put in the time and go further with this lawsuit than often some organizations um, uh, are, you know, some for, for very good reasons. But we wholeheartedly believe in the mission of those other organizations uh, in fighting corruption that you need transparency from the government, especially when things are, are this important and the stakes are so high. All right, so that takes me to uh, user Rockery, uh, which asks, how do you even subpoena a government agency? Like, who do you send notices to? I wanted to answer this question because that has been such a huge saga. There, there are procedures for this kind of thing, but given that we live not only in a world where it's hard to sue the government uh, and to, to be able to serve process, so we, we haven't served subpoenas so much as FOIA requests and then serving process of the, the complaint on these government agencies, but also we're dealing with COVID and everyone's working from home. The shenanigans that the various government agencies have been pulling with respect to not accepting service of things that they absolutely should be accepting service on, changing their addresses, saying that we need to send notices to different people, not accepting the mail, like the US post office is having a hard time getting a hold of these various agencies. It's been a mess and it's been sort of hilarious. And maybe this is just the sort of thing that, that lawyers uh, who are total wonks about this thing find interesting, but it's been a crapshoot and it's been a whole thing. I can't wait to tell you about it at some point. <laughs> All right, and then finally, uh, user Paolo Emanuel Tavares asks, given how politically charged your case is, do you think that the courts might delay the decision until after the election? So I sort of dispute the fact that this is a politically charged case. Uh, this is about governmental transparency. I think everyone on both sides of the aisle thinks that John Bolton's information is probably pretty important. And if the government did everything right and wasn't playing games with classified information, then that's important to know and we can take faith in the government conducting pre-publication review. If it turns out that's not the case, that perhaps we should support John Bolton and we should be really, really mad that the government censored his information if it was for political reasons. So it doesn't seem like governmental transparency should be a political issue. In terms of how the judiciary is going to react to this, I, I don't think they're going to care one way or the other. Federal judges are very, very independent 
precedent, federal judges, especially at the district court level, are really just umpires. They apply the law to the facts and the law is pretty cut and dry. So I would not be particularly concerned about any particular federal judge um, playing political games in this particular case. Now, that being said, I can't thank the national security counselors enough for handling the lion's share of this litigation, but I do need to spill some legal tea because one of the biggest questions I got is why is the website for the national security counselors so terrible? So many of you donated to them, uh, but also left uh, admittedly accurate snarky comments about their particular website. They are great lawyers, but their website needs work and they're working on it. Now, when I need a new domain for a website, I go to hover and maybe we should just scrap the old NSC website and create a specialty website like suethewhitehouse.com or release the Bolton cut. And if we do, we'll go to Hover because that's the best place on the internet to get yourself a domain name, in part because they have over 400 domain extensions to choose from, ranging from .com to .io, .me to dot ninja and dot pizza. And one of the great things about Hover is that they have lots of domains that you wouldn't normally think of. For example, I got legaleagle.tv from Hover. And while I haven't set up that website yet, at least I have that domain ready to go when I'm ready to create a website for that. And I did actually set up a website called legaleagleprep.com for the website that I have that helps law students. And it's super easy to buy a domain on Hover. There are no annoying upsells, no pop-ups. And if you have an account like I do, you can get another domain in less than 30 seconds or just check check to see if the website of your dreams is available. And once you set up your own personal domain, Hover also has the tools to set up a professional email address as well, because you never wanna be that lawyer that uses an AOL or Earthlink email address. Don't be like Stephen Biss. And you can also use Hover's Connect feature to easily hook up that domain to website builders like Squarespace, Wix, and Shopify. Of course, the best part is that if you go over to hover.com slash legal eagle, which you'll find in the description below, you'll get 10% off of your first domain purchase. Again, all you have to do is go to hover.com slash legal eagle or click on the link in the description to get 10% off your first domain. Plus clicking on that link really helps out this channel. So do you have other questions about the Bolton lawsuit? Leave your questions in the comments and check out this playlist over here with all of my other legal videos and legal reactions. So click on this playlist and I'll see you in court.